The Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers for secondary school students. Under the stewardship of Professor Pauline Nalovalyonga, in collaboration with the Ministry of Posts and Telecommunications, CAMTEL, CRTV and UNESCO. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your questions. Take it in your stride. This is Cameroon's solution to COVID-19 and beyond. Professor Nalova Lyunga, Minister of Secondary Education. Welcome to this session in which we'll be studying English language. Form 2, Gwebela Arnold Malfo, your English language teacher. In this session, which of course is a continuation of our exploration of the first module entitled Satisfying Basic Daily Needs, we are going to focus on speaking and we'll be speaking about means of transport. Therefore, our focus in this lesson is means of transport. Now, we will recall, of course, that we were talking about satisfying basic daily needs. Obviously, moving from one place to another is a basic daily need because we need to go to school, we need to go to our faith center, maybe to church or to the mosque, etc. We need to visit our parents, our friends, our grandparents, etc. Therefore, to achieve all of these things, we need to move. For, for that reason, therefore, that transportation is one of the basic daily needs. What are we going to achieve at the end of this session? What are our objectives? What we want to do? First, we want to use pictures to identify tra different transport vehicles and to see what they are used for. We want to look at pictures of them, identify, and then see what they are used for. We also want to talk about the various means of transport and classify them. In addition to this, we want to state some of the merits and the demerits of using these different means of transport. And lastly, we want to think about private means of transport and public means of transport. What, we want to think about what makes a means of transport private or public? And you know, what, what differentiates these two you know, ways of transportation, private and public? Those are our objectives for this session. But before we then begin to, to explore these means of transport proper, we must recall that we have had experiences. We're in Form 2. So, of course, Form 2 means that we've been in Form 1, we've been in primary school. So, we have already had experiences that are relevant you know, to means of transport because we have actually used them. And we use them daily. So, we've made use of Motor taxis, we've made use of you know motorbikes, we've used buses, we've used planes, we've used trains in some cases, etc. So we have the experience of using these means of transport. We have that experience. In addition to that, we are very familiar with the basic features of our planet, of the earth. We know about land, we know about water, we know about air, we know some other basic features. We know, for example, that uh, water, the earth is made up mostly of water, about 79%, and that land occupies about 21% of the surface area of the earth. We know about the air, the atmosphere. We are able to distinguish. We know that there the, the aren't too many obstacles in the air, on, like, down at, on land and things like that. So with all of this knowledge, 
we are able to determine what kind of means of transport will be suitable for which of these different parts of our earth. Okay, so based on this, these experiences and, and this knowledge that we have, let's then look at pictures A, B, and C below. And uh, after we have looked at the pictures, there are three things which we'll do. The first is that we will identify the objects in those pictures. Secondly, we're going to say where we can see them. Where, where do we easily find these objects that we would identify in those pictures, A, B, and C? And thirdly, we want to think, what are they used for? What is the purpose of those different objects that will be depicted in pictures A, B, and C? What is their use? So then, let's have a look. Starting with picture A. So again, we'll just let, let the image be there for a while so that we'll look at its features. And of course, if we're familiar with that object depicted in picture A, then as soon as we see it, we immediately know what it is. We immediately recall that we have seen it. We also immediately recall where we saw it, under what circumstances we saw it. I will note that it has the, sh the shape of a living thing. So it means it also has some features, some characteristics of that living thing, which shape it takes. Secondly, let's look at picture B. Unlike picture A, picture B you know, depicts more than one, more specifically four different objects. Two seem to be to share more characteristics than the other two. So what, what are those? What, what, what are those depicted in that image? Those four objects that we see there, what do they suggest? What are they? What are they used for? Where do we find them? And then we're moving on then to picture C. Picture C shows a whole number of objects. Some appear to be pretty large. Some appear meant to carry uh, cargo. So we'll, we'll look at something like this. You see that these ones are pretty small. We look at this, which seems to have different levels. We look at this one down that seems like it is meant to carry not people, but containers. So we see that they, they, they all apparently have similar uses. But what are they? Where, where, where are they used for? Where specifically can we find them? So having looked at pictures A, B, and C, therefore, we, we can observe that the, pic, the, the objects depicted in picture A, or the object depicted in picture A, is obviously an airplane, or what we call an aeroplane. You must have seen it before. It's an airplane, just simply. Remember, there was just one uh, object in image A. In picture B, on the other hand, there are cars, two cars are shown, and then a bus and a motorbike. Those are the objects that are shown in picture B. In picture C, we see water vessels. So what, what, what the commonality, you know, what brings them together, what puts them in the same group, therefore, is the fact that they all are used on water. They are used on water, but are they exactly the same? No. You have ships, you have boats, you have canoes, like we saw, or as depicted in picture C. This, therefore, airplane, cars, birds, where can we see them? Where do we see this? We have identified already. Because there are things that we have seen before, there are things which we use on a daily basis. So we can name them now very clearly. We can group them. But where can we see them? We realize that we'll see picture or typically in the sky. So you may have seen a plane, but not very close up. You may have just looked up, perhaps you are playing during break or you are doing sports, you know, during your physical education in school. And then you look up and you see what appears to be a very, very large bird going across the sky really fast. So you might have seen that, you know, up in the sky, or you may have, you may have seen it in, a, in an airport. You may have been to an airport and then seen a plane. What about picture B? 
Where do we find them? We realize that we are talking here about cars and buses and uh, motorbikes. So these can easily be found on our streets, you know, on the road, in our streets. We can find it also at car parks, at, at public car parks or private car parks. We can find them at car parks, in front of buildings, you know, at the parking lots of hotels and other such places. You may also find them in a garage, either at home or in a public garage. That's where you see. In, you also have, remember, you have, we have uh, uh, garages and parks which are meant for vehicles, and you have those oh, they also meant for motorbikes. You may have seen them even at bus stations or train stations. So those are the different locations in which we we'll see some of the objects which are depicted in picture B, or you may find it in the compound. Just what about C? Of course, if you have seen C, you may have you may have seen C or. You may realize that sea would normally be found on the seas, on the high seas, in the oceans, or at the seaport. In terms of what they are used for, obviously, they are used for transporting people, and they are used for transporting goods. People as passengers, also used for transporting goods, you know, things meant to be sold and bought. This leads us then to the means of transport. And as those pictures suggest, we realize that we can group them very easily, very, very easily. Those that are used on land, so we're talking about land transportation. Those that are used on water, so we're talking about water transportation. And then those that are used in the air, so we're talking about air transportation. And it is these different means you know, of, of using the different objects that we identify in pictures A, B, and C that group them. So as far as land transportation is concerned, then, the, the most obvious means of land transportation is foot. So going somewhere on foot. Human beings, of course, are bipedal. We have two legs and two feet. So it means you can move from one place to another using your feet and your legs. That's the most natural means of transport. And of course, it operates on land because you cannot walk on water and you cannot walk on air. Secondly, we have the car. Cars typically have four wheels. Just most normal cars have four wheels and they typically are designed, most cars are designed to, co to carry five people. The driver and the uh, for passengers. Most cars, again, there are so many exceptions, but generally, cars, most cars are designed to carry five people, a driver, and then four passengers. Motorbikes also are a common means of transport, especially in our context in Cameroon. Motorbikes are used in cities, they are used in rural areas, they are used in semi-rural areas, and of course, motorbikes are very important in the sense that they are able to take passengers closer to home. They are able to use roads that may otherwise be unmoderable. So we realize that, again, this just leads us to that idea that the choice of means of transportation will depend on the specific circumstance. We also have, of course, buses, buses which are larger than cars and can contain a greater number of passengers. Trains, on the other hand, although they are used on land, are different from the other means of land transport that we've identified so far because they don't use roads. Instead, they use rails. So we talk about the railway when we're talking about trains. And of course, trains do not have parks. We talk of a car park, we talk of a motorbike park, but we talk of a train station, not of a train park, please. So we talk of a train station and a train park. So other means of uh, land transportation might include, you know, horseback, camelback, etc. That is land transportation. What about water then? Water as a means of transport. And the first thing you notice is that the, the means of land transportation cannot just be 
apply when it comes to water because using the first one for example you cannot walk on water you can't you sink so you realize that the means of water transport therefore are designed so that they can float either float on water or they can even be mobile in water within the water so we observe that the, the, the first and the major means of water transport is the ship. Please remember ship, the means of transport first is articulated as ship, which means that the vowel is a little shorter, and not sheep, which refers to the animal, which is spelled with double E before P. So first you must distinguish those. And this ship, of course, takes an S in plural. That's just by the way. So the ship can contain so many passengers, thousands of passengers in some cases. It can also carry a very, very large amount of goods. So that's why we talk of cargo ships, we talk of container ships, we talk of tankers, and all of those are ships that are able to carry lots of goods. Now, ships go pretty slowly, but they carry a lot. What about boats? Boats are generally smaller than ships, and they go faster. Of course, they have engines, so they are automobiles because they have engines. They are self-propelled. Other types of ships, we could think of, think of yachts. Yachts, of course, are ships, generally smaller, but they are more of luxury ships. Therefore, they, they, their purpose is not really to transport people from one place to another, per se. Neither is it really to transport goods. It is more of to take people away from land. You remember, you're familiar with the structure of the earth. Take people away from land, just for them to relax, to have a good time away from land, away from work, and other things, just to relax as a form of entertainment. So we also know about canoes. Canoes and kayaks are different from boats and ships. Why? Because they are not automobiles. They require some manual, you know, activity in order to propel them on water. Although they can float on water, they require some uh, manual work in order for them to actually be mobile. I can also talk about submarines. Submarines, which are different from all the other means of water transport in the sense that they actually are mobile within, in water, whereas all the others are on the surface of water. So when you pass by Limbe or Kribi, in some cases, or even in Douala, and you see boats, you see canoes, you go even to a river or a stream around where you live, you realize that the canoes are on water. But submarines, on the other hand, can go within water. And lastly, you can talk of air transport. Air transport. Remember, we likened the aeroplane to a bird because it goes in the air. So aeroplanes or airplanes, therefore, are the most primary means of air transport. We can also think of helicopters which are smaller and which have blades that run at a very fast pace and as a result are able to lift the entire aircraft into the air. So they're generally smaller, and unlike aeroplanes, they can be used at across shorter distances. We can also think of hot air balloons, which are suspended because they contain a lot of air. And we can think also of gliders, gliders which cannot go across a long distance, and which are simply used for fun. So what means of transport then is appropriate for what purpose? We realize that it will depend on the distance and on how often we will need to cover that distance. So if you are living from home to school, for example, depending on how far school is away from home, you may simply go on foot. You might opt to use a taxi or a motorbike or even a bicycle. So you realize that you must, as far as means of transport are concerned, you are making choices. If you are moving within a village, a town or a city, what are you doing? You may use a car, you may use a motorbike. In some cases, you may use a bus. In some cases. What about when you're moving from one locality to another? You're moving between villages. You're moving between towns, between cities. It is more common to use either a minibus. In some cases, you use an omnibus. 
or just a bus, the short form of omnibus is bus. You may use a train in some cases. So you realize that the means that you use will depend on the distance and the frequency, you know, of your use of that particular path. Also, when you're moving from one country to another, one continent to another, are you likely to trek? Are you likely to go on foot? Absolutely not. You may opt to use a train where it's available, where there are intercontinental or inter-country trains available, you might opt to use that. You might use a bus, you might use an airplane, in some cases you might use a ship, even if, if you're moving from one country, which for example is is on so the mainland of a continent, and you're moving to a country which is an island. If you're moving, for example, from South Africa, just as an example, which is in, on mainland Africa to Madagascar, you would obviously have to use either air transport or you use water transport. Now, the choice, again, is guided by a number of things because the means of transport are not all the same in terms of their costs, in terms of how expensive they are. So when we choose means of transport, we think about how affordable, how much do we have to pay? That's in case you have to pay. How much do we have to pay to use it? How available is it? If you need it often, will you always have it? Or can you only have it once in a while? How reliable is it? Are you sure that the means of transport that you choose would actually take you from, your, uh, from, from where you're taking off to your destination? How convenient is it? And of course, the amount of convenience will depend on the purpose. If a person is not well, for example, you might need something which is more... Is it, is it appropriate to take someone who doesn't feel fine, who's an emergency, on a motorbike to the hospital, etc. So you realize that all of these are things that we consider as we choose our means of transport. So this, this table just illustrates some of the differences between, you know, as far as land, uh, air and sea transport are concerned with land, for example, realize that it, you, there are generally few passengers in buses, in cars, few passengers. As far as air travel is concerned, and especially with the use of airplanes, the passengers are relatively more. With sea travel, especially with ships, it's possible to have many passengers and a lot more luggage. I was precising that there's the, that possibility is as far as ships are concerned. Why light transport is relatively fast? Why fast? Because it generally covers short distances. Air transport is extremely fast. Although it covers long distances, it can go very fast. And obviously, there's, there are no obstacles up in the air, unlike on land. And sea transport is slowest. In terms of affordability, in a very general sense, it is quite cheap to use land transport. In fact, you pay nothing when you trek. And even when you use uh, taxis and you use motorbikes, it's relatively cheap. Air transport is not as cheap, so it's less affordable, whereas sea transport is affordable, especially for heavy goods. So, sea land transport, like I've said, works and suitable, especially for short distances. Air is good for long distances, and sea is good for long distances, especially when there are goods being transported. So that takes us to the, to the next aspect then that we'll talk about, which has to do with whether the means of transport is private or public. Private or public. What, what does this mean? In what cases do we describe our means of transport as private or as public? Now, of course, if you use a public means of transport, it means that that means of transport does not belong to you. It is not yours. You can't do as you please with it. In other words, you are just a passenger. When you get into a taxi on your way to school, or you get on a motorbike, or you hop in a bus, you are just a passenger. You don't own it, and you pay for the service, so it is payable. Also, with uh, public transport, there is less flexibility. You can't decide when it stops. You can't change your destination unannounced, etc. So you don't have flexibility, and again, that is because it is not yours, it is public. But because it is not yours, because you're just a passenger, you do not need to pay for repairs or for other maintenance you know, costs. That is not as it's not your, your, your duty. So a public means of transport cut across all, all the three different means: land, sea, and air. 
private means of transport, on the other hand, are owned by individuals. So if you are taken to school by your mother in her car, that car is a private means of transportation because your mother owns it, it is her property. And because of that, you do not pay to use it. You have more flexibility. She can decide to go drop off your younger sister in primary school before going to drop you off. However, because it is hers, you and your family have to pay to maintain it. So again, private means of transport cut across all the different means of transport, land, air, and sea. So this table then uh, just shows the differences, you know, between public and private transportation. Why the public, uh, public means of transportation are not owned by the passenger, you pay for the services, you are not very free, you don't have a, amount, a large amount of flexibility, and you also do not pay for the repairs. That's all for the public means of transportation. The private means of transportation is personally owned. Also, the services or the use of this private means of transportation are not paid for by the owners. They afford the, the owner a lot of flexibility, but, but and this is a disadvantage, the owner has to pay to take care of them. So let's just practice then. To move from one town to another, what do we use? Do we use mostly A, a car, a bus, or a train? B, a taxi, a ship, or a plane? C, a motorbike, a bus, or a ship? Or D, a boat, a bicycle, or a canoe? And very obviously, I'm moving from one town to the other. You realize that it's most common to use a car, a bus, or a train, especially in a Cameroonian context. So, two, let's, let's, which of these? Which of these uh, statements apply? It is used on land, it carries more passengers than a car, and it is the most common means of interton transportation in Cameroon. Are we talking about trains, planes, buses, or kayaks? Realize that in Cameroon, we are definitely talking about a bus, because although trains and planes are used for interton transportation, they are not as common as the use of buses. Three. It is notable because it travels very fast and is very safe. Is it a ship, a plane, a glider, or a hot air balloon? And obviously, a plane goes fastest and is safest. Again, safety is determined by the frequency of the occurrence of accidents. I realize that planes have the least number of accidents. Although, when they do have accidents, they are pretty disastrous. But in terms of the frequency, yeah, we will not have too many. What have we seen? We have seen that we have three major means of transportation, being land, air, and water. We have seen that they can be used in for different purposes. And we have also looked at them as being public in some cases and private in other cases. Let's then say true or false. One, all means of transport can be easily used for inter-country transportation. Is it true or false that all means of transport can be easily used for inter-country? Inter-country, all means, that's definitely false. If we take just one example, you know, using our feet, you know, going on foot, it cannot be easily used. It's true that if you go to the, to the border and then you can easily cross, but it cannot be easily used. So, ships and planes are used only for public transportation only and this suggests what does this suggest that you don't have people who own planes and of course that is simply false because there are some uh, uh, ships as water transportation there are some planes uh, helicopters etc that are owned by individuals who take care of these things and who have all the flexibility that we are that we said goes with owning this means of transportation Three, public transportation in Cameroon is generally payable. Is that true? Do we generally pay for public transportation in Cameroon? Obviously, that is true. And although we indicate here that that applies especially in Cameroon, in other places, the, this public transportation is occasionally free, particularly for some age groups, so students and some other such groups. Public transportation may be free in some settings. Four, Cars are the safest means of transport. 
We have already indicated earlier that the safest means of transport is air transportation, which has to do with planes. So therefore, that is false. All right. Lastly, private transportation is always cheaper than public transportation. Always. Realize that that's definitely false because it's not always cheaper. Why? Because you have to bear the cost of repairs. Therefore, it is not always cheaper. As our assignment, then let's do the following. First, what is your favorite means of transport? And once you've determined what your favorite means of transport is, see what about that means of transport makes it your favorite. So this lesson was prepared with the help of some material from Mastering English Students Book 2. And our next lesson will be on using the simple present tense for present actions and used to for past actions. Una tege si matege yop, una tege minga matege nyum, una tege majang matege ndom, mane tambia ninya ne injubia yen, ngani bana matege mot, ngani la kiri watege ndom, esa kina bia dinki do, mane tambia ninya ne injubia yen, tam tama mote tam zabike. Tam tam a tonge tam zabike tam 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 a mote tam zabike mane tam bia ninya ne injo bia yen 